All right, so we're back at it again with another solo to master. Now at a point where many people give up. A lot of people they do this challenge. They they might be predators or masters or pros or whatever, but they get to diamond and they just stop. Right, like in the solo to master, a lot of people they have a hard time in platinum. We talked about it. I have a hard time in platinum. It's a rough rank with a lot of randomness, uh, but. Once, you know, the select few make it out of Platinum, a lot of them run into issues in Diamond. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, as I'm mentioning in the VOD here, you guys won't hear what I'm saying. But at, at some points, I think in the VOD, in this specific game, I'll talk about it. Where basically my... Like, basically, Diamond is like... It's logical. Right, like, I think that's what's really good about Diamond, like, a lot of people struggle with it. Uh, I always struggle in the most random, like, Platinum, you have people that are really dumb, but they hit their shots. And then when you get to Diamond, it's like... There's a little bit more logical thinking, it's easier for me to understand what they're thinking, and being able to, like, predict what they're going to do, which you don't have in Platinum. And I guess to a certain degree, you don't, obviously, don't have any Gold and Bronze or whatever, but at least Gold, Bronze, Silver, you know, they're, they're, those are low ranks, and as I am... I'm not gold or silver, I can just outskill them mechanically, but again, you know, once you get to platinum or diamond, you need to start using your brain a little bit. And some people don't really know how to do that. Which ends up being difficult for people like me, who likes to play off of people's mistakes. Or rather, bad decisions, I should say. So this game here is really good, actually. We're gonna be showing um, some pretty good plays. I'm, as you might have been noticing here, I'm playing some Pathfinder. Normally, I would be playing Wraith, I think, on World's Edge, but we had just come off, I think, Broken Moon. By the way, terrible map, but I felt like we could play a little bit of Pathfinder and just, you know, play the flank a little bit, try to get some openings or whatever. Because I think it's a, it's a good legend specifically for playing the off angles. So what I'm doing here is I'm laying down a little bit of suppressive fire. I know my teammates are low. I know they are, they are one man down. Maybe try to get a pick here. Especially because I'm Pathfinder, I have to keep in mind I have a terrible, terrible hitbox. Uh, and, and taking a fight or trying to clutch as a Pathfinder is very hard. So you want to play the off angle the whole time. This game is really cool as well because we made a lot of clutch decisions when it came to like positioning and just like macro, I guess. Uh, so I'm really interested to show you guys how we do that. And then it's actually a way you can get ahead in, a, you know, Platinum, but especially probably Diamond as well. It's all about doing it well. Anyways, we're getting third-party here, so I immediately make a, a zipline. This, a, a, you know, this is a benefit of playing Pathfinder. You can kind of back up real quick, get the reset off, and, uh, you know, chatter it reset. So this third party came in, it wasn't like a super good fight in Fragment, but it ended up being too long. We didn't close it out, and we ended up getting third party from it, from uh, Frag East, I think. So I'm healing up here, I see uh, Lifeline is crawling towards me, if she keeps going this way she will be able to get revived. However, the third party did spot her, I peek here, I was already playing like a head glitch or angle, so that, you know, I will be able to beam them on the zipline, however the timing was off. I take this high ground here, I'm chilling, I know they can't get to me, but I apparently have a Pathfinder, I was waiting for it, so to a certain degree. Get the killer. Again, they can't follow up. They could climb on like the little this little pipe here they can get up on, but they can't actually get up here. So you know I get to loot up a little bit. I know I have some time here to get a hot swap and loot up. That is the the first party. So I have the third party underneath me, try to put some damage in here, doesn't work out. And then the other team coming into pinch here. I try to I try to get like maybe a knock here, get a little bit of a damage, but then I realized like we gotta leave. So I queue out decent grapple, not my best grapple. And then I'm out, and I'm chilling. But we're obviously gonna have to make a big play here to get this game back on the ground. You know, like actually turn this into as big of a game as it ends up being. So we'll show you how that happens. I'm just waiting for them to start fighting. I sip over because it does seem like they stop paying attention, mostly. And this actually is a really cool game because you're gonna see right now we can't grab Bangalore, I probably could have like, if a beeline shit for her instead of hesitating, I might have been able to grab Bangalore, but I didn't. Uh, but the one that matters the most is grabbing a lifeline, because as you guys might know, she's a support legend, which means she can buy back the banners. And as since I'm a skirmisher, I can get another zipline by scanning. So I'm thinking about reviving here, but they're fighting right there, and this is gonna backfire. So I'm gonna use my now 200 meter zipline, and get the hell out of dodge. It is near impossible 
well for them to follow me here. Obviously, they can take my zipline, but they're fighting each other and whatever. So I'm sure I should be able to get to the side ground here and get a revive off. Which, uh, spoiler alert, we do. Just getting a little bit of loot here. So we're gonna do a bit of a macro decision here. Like I'm going for the the, the north northeast. Like just trying to grab some of the loot up here. We know that realistically there won't be a team. Uh, I guess it could come to, from Skyhook and go survey camp, but like, it's been a long fight in Fragment, the way the zone looks. Uh, it's going to be unlikely there's a team, it might be unlikely there's a team climatizer in survey, because they must have rotated in, maybe towards the ending, whatever. I mean, it is in diamonds, so it is a bit hard to read sometimes, but... Anyway, so, you know, there's a zipline here, get up close. You gotta use it as much as you can, especially, again, because of the skirmish or passive. Uh, revitalizing or regening your Q, or whatever your zipline. Uh, make sure you want to use it as much as possible. I'm just looking for better guns. Uh, as I've established before, I don't think that Pathfinder should be using a shotgun. Uh, for one very simple reason. He has a big, chunky hitbox. So that's like a main reason I don't want to use Pathfinder in general. But you're, you, because of the hitbox, and thanks to his grapple, the mobility uh, from his grapple, you want to basically... And I'll try to call it out if I see it more, we already did it in a previous fight. But you want to try to play the off angle, ideally try to play a head glitch, and then be able to cue back to your team or grapple back to your team when when po when it's possible, and never really like let them get close or focus you too hard. And you know the thing is obviously if you have a shotgun, you're kind of banking them then uh, on them getting close. So you want to keep them at a long range to a um, mid range at most as Pathfinder. And, and keep him like at a, at a very, very long arm's length, like at a grapple's length, I guess. Because again, like the big chunky hitbox means that if you take a shotgun fight, a 1v1, you have a shotgun, they have a shotgun, you're playing angles, you're playing a bubble. One, it's really awkward because of your height, and two, again, because of how chunky your hitbox is, it's very easy for the enemy to hit a massive, you know, ma like a Mastiff pump, uh, e full EVA 8 shot, a... PK shot, like it's just so easy to get max damage from the shotgun compared to how difficult it is for you to put the same damage in. So he is just not the legend you want to have a shotgun on. So we're still doing a reset here. Bangalore is very slow for some reason. I'm not sure what's up with that necessarily. Uh, making a very vital switch here, especially because of a light mag from the car to the R9. And I've just thought of this literally right now. Um, but I just thought of a really good little tip. So if you have a car, this is like next level, because obviously you want to like keep in mind like what what are your teammates using, what's your secondary weapon and whatnot. But if you are using a car and you have in a vacuum the option to choose whoever equipping a light magazine on the car or a heavy magazine on the car, you want to pick up a light magazine for the car. If you have a decision, to, if you can choose whether you want to pick up heavy or light, you want to pick up light for the very simple reason that you can use this to uh you can use the the light magazine and the light am ammunition and just swap it out for r9 which is infinitely better than the car this season it is so good it is probably like one of the best weapons if not the best weapon uh overall right now such a good weapon do not sleep on r9 i cannot stress it enough you will uh if you start learning like control the recoil a little bit you're gonna feel like a god also i want to share a tip i know it's like i'm I can find a way to segue into this tip, so I'm just gonna mention it now. Uh, I read it on, on Twitter, and it's a pretty good take. So when you hit the Horizon Q, as you guys know, the season, Horizon's uh, tactical, it lowers your accuracy midair. And apparently, that's it lowers your accuracy to hip fire values, which means that if you have a laser sight, which you have on R9, you don't have a car, so I guess that would be a segue. Um, your, your mid air or mid gravity lift accuracy gets better. So. Keep that in mind. Now we're just kind of walking in here. We're gonna play from the edge here. There are six squads alive, but there's still a, so maybe not the most serious of a lobby, but it's still a good opportunity to learn. It's still a good opportunity to see how you approach the situation because this is very common. You have uh, early culling in some lobbies. There's early culling, like you know, by zone one, zone two, a lot of squads have died, and then there might be another culling towards like the middle of the game, zone zone three, um, zone two. Because like, now it's literally just zone three, but there's always like these callings in the game around central points, and then there's always after the first 
calling or uh, even after the second if there's a second there's going to be a prolonged uh, moment of nothingness where nothing is really happening and that's when it's in your best interest i feel as, especially in diamond right now it, it it evolves eventually you'd have to do this in platinum or eventually you might have to do this in, in mass or whatever but right now i feel like in diamond you can use that to your advantage. So you have a calling one, calling two. Uh, try to avoid fighting early on for these callings. Or like until, you know, you get to a point where... Because you're, you're basically going to get to a point in a match where there's not many squads alive and there's a lot of space to work with. You, can, you, you will have been able to loot up or whatever. If you watch some tournaments or scrims or whatever, you might learn how the zones pull and you might know that we're literally in God spot right now. So if you can identify where the God spot is, after the game slows down, you can kind of just walk up and take the god spot and make the most out of it. So this is a very greedy peek I'm making, trying to get some pot shots with the wingman. It's not working out. It's also very risky because there's a big risk we get shot in the back here, so we can't like take too long. But there are two teams kind of fighting around the south side there. Ah, oh, like this. this is a good shot. It's just opportunity kill, really. Uh, but there are, uh, again... We know these teams have to fight on the south. They can't run up because they have they're like a domino, uh, or there's like a domino effect going on. If they try to run up at the same time, or one team runs up, the other will shoot them and will punish them. So they're kind of stuck there, and we kind of just have to constantly, you know, look north, look south, keep looking around. Don't let a team surprise us, especially because again we have the god spot. We know where this one's gonna pull, or I know where this one's gonna pull. And that's why I wanted to take this so early. And now we're just kind of playing to have that eventual advantage later. Now, at this at this very point, it's not super good to play on top of this choke. There's like so much open ground, there's not much cover. And you can get punished. It's a reality. It might happen. But um, it will pay off later on, so it's worth it. Anyways, moving on. So this team here actually ended up running around the left side. And we assume they're probably running Geyser side. And I'm kind of feeling like, okay, we can put damage down, maybe we can kill the team on the right. Again, very risky, because we could get walked up on. But, uh, it's worth a try. Because at the same time, if we manage to clear this team out, uh, with the assumption that the other team went Geyser or even farther, we have full control on the south side, we no longer need to look at the south side, and we can just go up into the choke and put all our efforts towards the north. But this fight is certainly getting drawn out, and Lifeless is going to do some really cool stuff in a little bit. So now Bangalore took a lot of damage, so we just have to cover her. I'm trying to like just deny the... Well, he's trying to deny the, the heal, and I'm just trying to deny it, the, the, the heal. I'm taking a lot of damage on account of being a Pathfinder. I get Bop, we do have a lifeline over, I give him a shield so he can play it a little bit. Good beams, almost gets one clipped, but ends up turning it around. Absolutely crazy with it. Bangalore goes down again, lifeline is just putting damage on, reviving, jumping around. Getting Bangalore back up, almost going down again. And then she ends up cleaning up the fights, getting those revives off, absolutely massive. And with how much we traded, there is such a massive risk that the Geyser team comes up, or one of the teams from the North comes up. And I'm just like, okay, we gotta like... This fight had to be cleaner. The fact that this wasn't this clean is really bad, because that's going to backfire on us if we spend too much time. Uh, come on, Otter, go take the high ground here, give, give a good example. Here we go, so I'm going back to the high ground. Just to, yeah, the spin bugging out lately. Right. Just to kind of like provide that pressure and hold the space again. It's it's that god spot. Um, ends up working out for us because people are really passive here towards the end. But it's like, if you play if you play late game, you need to know how to how play late game and you need to know where to play late game. Like, it's very important. You can't just go and take a spot and be like, oh, maybe it pulls here. You need to have, like, a plan. Anyway, so I I used my trusty wall hack and I knew it would be here. So I ended up turning back and just kind of putting damage down. Not really... Well, there's some damage, but... Point being, I was just looking backwards because I'm like, we can't just give this up for no reason. Good damage from my teammates. I need to reset real quick. We got the entry pick here. And again, you notice I'm doing occasional glances to the north. That's because I know... It's very risky, but we have to clean them up the same thing as before. Uh, very often, you just need to be ruthless. Like if you have a god spot or a position that you want uh, that has a clear loss condition, as I like to call it. Uh, you guys might know the terms, there's loss conditions, there's win conditions. If you have a loss condition, which is as simple as if there's a team here, 
they will just push up and third party us when if, if they get the timing right or we get for, uh, pushed. Uh, you need to eliminate that loss condition. You you can't let that happen. So you, again, you need to be ruthless and know we have to kill these guys. And the second they take or try to take any space that leads towards your loss condition, you need to just instantly shut it down. And what works with that is people very rarely expect it. We pull this off in scrims, in, in tournaments, I pull this off obviously in ranked, obviously in pubs, though like I don't think people think the far ahead in pubs, generally speaking. And this is more like a back of the head thing, like I don't think, oh it's a loss condition, it's a win condition mid-game. But it, I do identify that we can't let them be there, we can't let them live uh, and play behind us there because they will be a problem later on. Now I'm talking to you guys here in the video, and by the way, if you're enjoying it, hit the like or subscribe or whatever. You know, when I'm talking to you guys about it, you have to keep in mind that... You have to keep, I've just tried to make it more understandable for you guys at home. So you understand what I'm saying, how I'm thinking, and how you should think about things when you things. So right now, we are just kind of playing the high ground here, there's nothing really happening. I ended up looking the wrong way, literally when the... Rave made a portal out, but we still have a great spot here. I'd, again, I'd call this a god spot. We have good high ground, we have good angles, we have zone. Uh, and a head glitch if things end up working out in the favor of the other teams. But it's pretty much a shooting gallery. The Rafe actually ended up teleporting a little bit early, I'd say. And she just ends, or she and her team ends up getting focused by everyone. I decided to walk up here because they did a lot of damage and traded a little bit. Pretty solid damage with the wingman. I've done better, but you know. Taking a small high ground here, just trying to look for damage, look for picks. We know there's a solo on the left. Uh, all the way in the back there on the on the west. I can't find my mouse. Actually, I think they killed him by now. And now it's mainly just kind of cleaning up. Good damage, Otter. Thank you, Otter. You're welcome, Otter. Actually, no, that is a solo and it's the last one alive. Just, it's not a, necessarily a very exciting game. We have way more exciting games from this day because I popped off like crazy. But I feel like this game is a good example of how you can... Well, we, we recovered, obviously. And then how you can turn any game into a win just by understanding you know the meta understanding where the zone pulls understanding what's going to happen next and how you can prevent that like you, you can figure if you can figure out what's gonna get you a win and what's in the way you can eliminate uh you know what there is to lose or rather you can eliminate what will make you lose and increase your odds of winning this is more of a high level concept of i guess decision making so i don't know if you guys Thought this was interesting, but let me know in the comments if you did. Uh, we can also just go back to normal, boring, uh, not thinking that far ahead, solo to master. Oh yeah, I went in and did 4k damage, because I actually think we have a 4k damage coming up next. So, so subscribe for that one. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. Take it easy, and I will see you all tomorrow. Peace out.